Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and in today's discussion we're going to talk about the hottest button topic that there is over the weekend in Path of Exile, which is of course the differences in between the international version of Path of Exile and the Chinese version of Path of Exile. Of course a whole bunch of us have been tuning in to the race that's going on that's being featured with some custom mechanics and some custom stats, some more difficulty added in for a whole bunch of massive big name streamers and racers to compete against one another promoting the Chinese version of Path of Exile. Now, in the past, I want to say this was back in October. Yeah, it was October of 2019. We actually did a bit of an overview in between some of the differences between the international version of PoE and the uh, Chinese-based version of Path of Exile known as Exile Road. And of course, this is a big topic right now. Everybody, it seems to be on any kind of forum, Reddit, YouTube, Twitch, or uh, any other sort of social media that's related to Path of Exile is discussing the differences. So if you've been living underneath a rock for the last weekend, there are some differences that are very helpfully summarized here. And then we're going to get into some of the positives and maybe some of the negatives. And I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, of course, in the comments, what your own take is on this particular subject, whether or not you would like there to be some of the aspects that are some of these differences between the servers to be brought to the international servers, whether or not you're opposed to it, why you're opposed to it, or why you're in favor. So I'd love to hear all that from you down below and to see exactly where the G3 community sits on some of these topics as opposed to the larger PoE community at large. I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, so all that being said, let's dive right in. So this is one Reddit post and of course all of the helpful information to all of these links are posted down below in the video description if you want to read them for yourself. So this is a post on the front page of Reddit as of presently the time of recording. Summarize the known 10 cent differences. So here are some of the differences. There's a passive tree simulator that you can set the passives of the following points and then you can even directly import the talents of others and automatic, um, automatically summarize the talent attributes. So it's a bit more like POB, how you can kind of predict and plan out your tree. Also, there's an official talent upgrade template. The talent selected by uh, the user can be imported into the talent tree into a light blue background. Woohoo! There's also, of course, an in game auction house, which, yes, if you want to rant about an auction house, please do so down below. You can buy items directly from the in game store or the web trade. You're all inside uh, the game hub at that point in time. So that's something that's featured via Chinese PoE. When you die, uh, there's actually a display and a highlight bar that comes up in chat that will tell you what exactly killed you and what mods were presently affecting that thing. Now, at the moment, it's only telling us the literally the thing that hits us last, the thing that deals the killing blow. And what's interesting about that is previously... Grinding Gear Games has commented that that wouldn't be possible, that there are too many calculations going on at any one point in time to actually say what actually kills you. So it's a bit interesting because the computer and the server and the system clearly does the math of what actually kills you that makes you go from 1 HP to 0. But anyway, supposedly we don't have the tech to be able to do that, but the Chinese servers do have the tech to be able to do that. Also, they've got automatic pickup currency pets. Uh, the magic one picks up everything but rare pets. You can set which currency to pick up for. And uh, eventually what those do is those revert to becoming back to a magic pet. Yes, you've got to pay for those. That is a strictly RMT transaction. You pay real money and you get an auto loot pickup pet. Also, they have a whole bunch more events because, of course, there's competitiveness and the esports nature of things that are in the uh, Chinese atmosphere for gaming are just much more competitive. A lot more things are based on competition rather than on individual gaming. It's a bit more social in general. That's a wide sweeping statement, uh, which, of course, always gets me into trouble. But there are more oftentimes competitive events on the Chinese version of the client than there are in the international version of the client. One of those events is the Unlimited Tower Climbing Competition, the Path of Endurance. Every Friday and Saturday at 9 p.m. for every league, it lasts for one hour and you get a valuable unique drop every five floors. In the 25th or the 30th floor, you get a tier one random unique like Shavs or Taste of Hate or something. It's, it's essentially a guaranteed way to get top tier uniques to drop for you. Then you've got a whole bunch of other quality of life things that are added in, such as built in one button to trigger one or more flasks. You can set that. Then you've got talents before level 70 can be reset for free. So in other words, if you wanted to level with one particular character and one particular spec, let's say you leveled with a storm brand uh, version of an inquisitor. And then once you hit level 69, you wanted to reset your entire tree and go do something else entirely. You could do that. 
Also, the currency dropped in the story mode is bound to the account, so you can't trade any of that stuff that you dropped during the first 10 acts. The quests give the currency bound to the account as a reward. Lastly, some microtransaction items can be traded and sold for 10 cent points with each league being free microtransaction items to collect based on your time played and based on some other interactions, which is somewhat similar to the challenge system, but it's much more ramped up over in the Chinese version. Okay, so those are some of the differences between these two particular games or versions of the game. And of course, there's even more quality of life. This is just a pictorial example posted by K Rich on, again, on the Path of Exile subreddit. This is just a quick example of the Chinese help text box versus non-Chinese help text box, showing you exactly what's going on with the ascendancies versus showing you what's exactly going on with the chat panel. Now, one little incremental just quibble that I've got with this particular image is you're comparing apples and oranges a little bit in that we're not comparing what the uh, uh, international version of Path of Exile display help text looks like describing ascendancies versus what the uh, Exile Road, Chinese version of the client, does. In other words, we're comparing a help window for chat versus a help window for ascendancies. So th that being said, there might be some things that are better about the Chinese version of the game in terms of their help and their explanation. There might be some that are worse or better in the international version. But at least in this image, I just wanted to point that out. As soon as I saw this, I was like, okay, that's helpful to say that there's differences. But let's just remember, we're kind of comparing some apples and oranges here. Okay, and now comes the opinion time. So feel free to blast your opinions down below. Here's a couple of different opinions from some users on Reddit. So why you know Praise the Sun started this particular post. It says, Reddit, please don't ruin Path of Exile. He says, I've seen a staggering amount of posts about how great the Chinese client is. Sure, there's some cool features, but most of it is mobile game level pay to win garbage. GGG is making a great effort to keep that stuff away from the Western client. Trust me, you don't want to open that door. For once, it's open, it cannot be closed, and GGG knows that. A great game finds a balance between the developer's vision and what the players find fun. I'm concerned that they'll actually listen to some of you and implement more microtransactions, account-bound items, auction houses that will ruin longevity, and make everything super cheap. Free respects so decisions don't matter. If you're concerned about picking up items in flask management, just take a break and rest your wrists and play something else. Items and decisions have weight in the Western client. China doesn't have that. I usually don't speak up on Reddit, but please Reddit, don't ruin the game. Now, the top comment on this is a wonderfully prevalent argument that I have seen oftentimes used about various philosophical game development decisions that Path of Exile has implemented or not implemented throughout the course of its history. Oftentimes, as soon as someone mentions something that's quality of life, someone else will mention, hey, that makes the game pay to win or too easy, right? So there's this tension here between player quality of life and the difficulty that the developers want to exist inside the game to continually draw players back and have some level of challenge. So there's a tension there. There's a definite spectrum. And the argument that constantly gets made about adding something that's quality of life and then conversely making the game too easy is, yeah, well, you don't have to do all of it. You can just do some of it. And that's what Mapcar says here. He says, we are not talking about having all the same features and payments. But things like explaining ascendancies are super basic. Also, the death logs. I cannot imagine any reason why it's not in the Western client. And yes, of course, you can pick and apply features one by one. Now, to further put a bit more of a lens on this or a narrowing lens on this massive scope, because this is a really, really big topic. I think it's helpful that there's some extra added discussion layers added to this particular topic. So yes, I want to admit straight up right away. Yes, you can add features one by one. And we've seen grinding gear games do that over the years. Many of you are newer players, or maybe some of you only are newer players to Path of Exile, and you never played Path of Exile prior to it having a 10 act story campaign. It used to be that Path of Exile was four acts and you played them through three different difficulties and that was the story campaign. Imagine having to fight Malachi in Act 4, not once, not twice, but three times prior to getting to maps. Remember, there was a time in Path of Exile's history that the Shaper was not a fight, that Aziri wasn't a part of the base game. There was a time, in fact, when the Ledge was the end game of Path of Exile. You'll hear about some veterans talking about endless Ledge running and farming. 
Lots of different things have happened throughout the development and the course of history that Path of Exile has taken on. Yes, some features have been added and others have not. But oftentimes when a feature gets added to Path of Exile, this is again a general statement and it usually gets me in hot water, but here I go. I'm jumping into the boiling hot lava pool of discussion. The difference is, is that when GGG oftentimes adds something that's quality of life, it's because they're being forced to, or they feel like they're being forced to, because there's no other alternative to something that is otherwise hurting the gameplay experience. The number one example of this is the trade website in Path of Exile. The official trade website in Path of Exile has a little bit of history. I'm not going to bore you with all of that history right now, but I'm simply going to summarize it by saying this. At one point in time, Path of Exile and Grinding Gear Games had developed a system such that you could share the ability of looking at your items and validating that your items were your items and you could post them onto the official Grinding Gear forums. Now, at that point in time, players began indexing and building their own servers to index the data that was on those forums to search for items. At that point in time, then other players began building third-party websites to then filter that information and put it into a helpful UI for other players to actually examine and trade on. Many of you still use some of those third-party websites instead of using the official website. My point in all of this is that the official website that exists today for trading on the international version of Path of Exile only exists as a quality of life feature because enough players did things that made it so that way there were all of these different alternatives and that were potentially risky as well, by the way, from a user standpoint. I mean, Grinding Gear Games had no affiliation with a whole bunch of those websites and therefore they had no control over what was going on on those websites. Whether those websites were phishing for your data or whether or not they were asking for login information or whether or not they were then going to try to steal your account, that would be, of course, the most extreme version of it. But that was nonetheless a concern. So as we talk about opening up the door and just adding features one by one, just remember, I'm not, I'm not giving an opinion here about whether or not we should or we shouldn't ask for that. What I'm saying here is, is just remember that Grinding Gear Games development approach has typically been to add quality of life to things that they want to see and only things that players want to see if players have essentially made it a forced issue that must be supported by Grinding Gear Games. Another case in point example of this is Path of Building. Path of Building is a wonderful, beautiful offline template planner for all of us to use to build our characters. It's what I primarily use when I'm helping players with their particular builds or offering suggestions and advice. It's what I primarily use when I'm going through a forum guide and then going and checking back on the forum guide and seeing exactly how they develop their character and whether or not it's explained well. I wanna see what the Path of Building actually looks like. Now. That is a wonderful example of a community built tool that now actually has gained some level of wide traction. A lot of players are familiar with Path of Building and it's in kind of this semi awkward state. It's in a state to where a lot of players are updating it and even presently there are forks supporting it that are based off of the original version but are no longer the original version of Path of Building themselves. And those versions are continually updated by community members by contributing to that particular well-known, well-accepted particular piece of software that's a support software for the game of Path of Exile. It enhances or augments your enjoyment of the game. Now at the moment, there hasn't been any kind of rumors or any kind of worries about Path of Building being some sort of security breach that is in any way, shape or form harming to the game. Whereas with trade, there was so much of a demand on the website and on the forums through players indexing it so quickly, GGG felt the need to just create their own trade website and, and to lessen the server load of what was going on with the forums. So here are two examples. One, with the trade website, the GGG said, look, we've got to give in on this quality of life stuff. And another example, Path of Building, where GGG said, we don't have to give in because it's not costing us anything to allow this thing to exist independently and we don't have to do the work to put it out there. I'm not saying that that's good. I'm not saying that you have to agree with any of those decisions. I'm simply saying as we are evaluating and asking for things and making pitches and, and presenting ideas, we have to remember how Grinding Gear Games typically operates as we ask for and look for suggestions. Okay, to put a bow on this discussion and wrap it up, I simply want to end by saying this. Pandora's box. Once you open the various quality of life comparative issues, right? I, 
it doesn't matter what it is. Let's let's say it's a loot pet. Let's say it's quality of life, like improving the in-game help. Let's say it's improving the in-game web browser. Let's say it's adding an auction house. Let's say it's simply adding a count bound uh, particular currency. Let's just say that it's resetting the tree at level 70. Whatever topic it is that you prefer based on the Chinese client versus based on the international version of Path of Exile, where do you stop? I'm not asking where you think GGG would stop, because we all know where we think GGG would stop. At least at the moment, we have a present answer, which is they stop where they've stopped. The game looks different on the international version of Path of Exile than it does on the Chinese client side of things. So we already know at least some extent where GGG stands on this. But I want to know where you stand on this. Where do you draw the line between quality of life and just absolutely uh, pushing the game into a realm that it ought not to go. Whether that's too easy, whether that's too automatized, whether that's too pay to win, whether that's too microtransaction heavy, whatever it is, I wanna know your reasoning for what it is that actually puts a lid on this thing. Where is it that you stop? What quality of life features would you want to see added? And then where do you draw the line? Where is it that you, you to quote Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise, where is it that you say the line must be drawn here and no further? Where is it that you say quality of life can only go this far? For me, I'll give a quick example. And then again, I'd love to read your discussion points down below. For me, on the topic of loot pickup, it's very, very tricky. I use a vertical mouse. I oftentimes have trouble with my right hand, with my wrist. Oftentimes throughout the first month or so of a league, I develop lots of pain in my wrist and there's lots of things that I'm doing to fix that. Now, that being said, whenever you feel pain in your wrist or gaming is actually causing you pain, you ought to stop, right? That's something that you ought to address. But I'm simply approaching this from a personal level. If I'm having pain because I'm picking up so many different currencies or interacting and clicking too much with the particular configurations of Path of Exile as of presently, I think that a loot pet would help me out greatly in that regard. Now that being said, does that mean that I would click any less than I presently already click? In other words, if I didn't pick up any loot, would I simply click more often because now I'm running more maps or I'm killing more monsters or I'm using more active skills? Would the ability to actually not pick up on individual stuff, would that change the actual personal considerations I have about the ethical nature or unethical nature of a loot pet? For me, it wouldn't, and here's why. For me, picking up loot in Path of Exile is a decision that you have to make. It's a decision that you have to make whether or not you're gonna include it on your loot filter. It's a decision whether or not you have to include it in your proximity for actually picking something up. You see something on your loot filter, will you actually pick it up? Most players oftentimes say, if something is on your loot filter, then you probably ought to pick it up. If you're not picking it up and it's on your loot filter, go change your loot filter and make that thing no longer appear. Those are quality of life considerations that each individual player has to make. Once you add into Path of Exile an auto loot pet or an auto loot feature where things automatically go into your inventory, the weight of actually deciding what to pick up is no longer there. Things simply just get vacuumed up onto your character. Now, even if it starts off with, well, Iron, you wouldn't have to pick up everything. Maybe it's only like exalted tier stuff or above, or maybe there's a tier that the auto loot picker would pick up. Okay, then you get back into that debate of then, well, how actually helpful is it? And at what point in time do we actually just say, okay, that tiered stuff needs to go and, and it'll just open up the box and we'll just pick everything up. So this is where it gets very, very interesting. And again, we all have got different personal experiences. Me and my wrist come with one particular perspective. You and your gaming background are gonna come with another different particular perspective. But that's why I would love to hear from each of you. Where do you put a cap on this? Where do you draw the line on these particular different quality of life differences between the Chinese client and the international client of Path of Exile. Where do you draw the line and what is it that makes you draw that line? What principles or what ideologies or what sort of thoughts are going into drawing a line at a specific quality of life improvement or not? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'm G3Iron and I hope you stay tuned for our next discussion. And I hope that today is the day, regardless of whatever server you're playing on, a Mirror of Calandra drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.